Let me get my face in here. <laughs> my my face, like where I'm at. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Everyone, let's give it a minute. To let everyone come in. Just a few minutes. I'm trying to position. Okay. Let me, me not. <laughs> Let me not touch it because then it's gonna be half my face and the people With gonna be mad. We only can see half your face, Queen Row. We can only see then you be in my inbox. No. <laughs> All right, everyone. If you can hear us, share this live. Hey, Miss Sandy. If you can hear us, share this live. Give us a comment, give us a like. I am your Quo host Queen Ro and my guest co host is Miss Tanika. Hey and I guess tonight is the Dr. D. Evans, the one and only, the special one that she's going to give us a profit at work. So y'all better stay tuned tonight. Okay, so she has a couple of business. Home girl is doing her thing. If you follow up on her, it's, it's just so much. The list is long. She has a couple of businesses. She does public speaking, book her. And she has about what, three or four books, Dr. Evans out? Yes, she, is, you wanna talk about it a little bit before we jump right into this? Of course, of course. Thank you all for having me tonight. I'm so glad. I got to share it. Let me know what page it's on so I can get some people on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so my books, um, A Book of Prayers, um, it's literally a book full of prayers. So you can literally flip to it if you're like, yo, I ain't to pray about these finances. I got a prayer. You just recite it and you go from there. Um, I have a book called God, I'm Disappointed. And so I'll walk you through the journey Ooh. of disappointment, um, which I think sometimes we steer away from in church. You know, we always talk about, you know, joy, what's coming. But I don't think we often articulate what it's like sitting in the middle of the mess. Mm. And so in the middle of my mess, I wrote a book and I was honest and I said, God, I'm disappointed. And so <laughs> I write about that, my journey. And then um, but for my dissertation, I wrote a book called Procrastination and the Theology of Work. That's my life's work is understanding purpose, your work, the difference between that and labor. And um, I do have a book coming out at the end of the month. Ooh, you know. Devotional. Thank you all for Pentecost. So I'll let y'all know about that as well. Okay. Wow. So you are very booked and busy. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love, we love it. it. <laughs> I have, you know, I didn't know you had that many books until I read up on your, um, I think it was something that you had on your Facebook or something. You uh -huh. go in. I was like, wow. I definitely want to get a couple and start reading now that I'm finished with school. Yeah, yeah, and I have y'all. I have all this free time. Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like before, I would do audio books because I'm always in my car. I'm going from here, here, and there. So I would do right. audio books all the time. But now, I can kind of sit down and I'm gonna yes. pull. I'm gonna pull up a book. Come on. So yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait. And and I, I need, I'm gonna send it to you so you can autograph it for me. Then you just send it back to me. I will do that. I will do, do it that way. And if for for those of you who don't know, um, me and Dr. Evans went to um, undergraduate together. That's right. Let's see your sound. Okay. Yes, we did. Shout out to the Rams out there. Hey, Rams. Alumni hey. pride. I want to see you guys at homecoming. And don't forget to donate. It's that time. It is. But yes. Um. Miss uh, Tanika, do you want to talk a little bit about what you got on got going on before we get into the nitty gritty of tonight? Huh. Well, of course, I'm an author as well. So I have two books out. Yeah, Vanilla Setbacks and Vanilla Setbacks, The Climax. I'm also working on part three of Vanilla Setbacks. And then I have another book coming out called Bear. So it's like a book of short stories, just bearing it all. Like I've gone th through so much. I'm going through a lot right now. But I count it all joy and I thank God for my storms and I know it's, you know, a rainbow at the end. So, yeah. yeah. So booked and busy. <laughs> you also booked and busy. Oh, I'm so, I'm super busy. excited when I see women of color accelerating their life and just doing great things. But not only that, they're taking other women with them to these places. Yes. And yeah. I'm just so excited for you guys. All right. Enough about that. Let's get into the night. <laughs> The topic tonight is just be you. 
just be you yeah. um i had this conversation yesterday matter of fact because i was getting a little irritated <laughs> with someone bear with me and the irritation came about because this person was trying to cover up who they really were and i'm like we know you're not that person just go ahead and be you you don't i mean all the stress you got to go through all the lies you got to keep telling all the money you spent just be you baby you we ain't got no heaven hell to put you in just be right you. that's it so um dr d tell us what you think about that <laughs> Cause I know you don't wrote some books. <laughs> Shut up with some books. Maybe. So I know you got right. something to tell us. I I echo those sentiments. I think that it is extremely frustrating for me to communicate with a person that I feel is not being authentic. Mm. But I have also learned that it is not my my responsibility to make somebody be authentic. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What I've learned is all I can do is make sure that I am authentic. Exactly. And I think the turning point happens when you know you're in that iffy place in your 30s, where your friendships start to shift, mm -hmm. and when you start to shift in your friendships, and you look at life differently, and you you finding out that God is not just this little light of mine, you know, it, you need to be a little bit more, you know, right. And you're on that journey of, I'm not who I was. Let me make sure I'm in the right lane, you know? Right. And then people look at you and try to accuse you. Well, you weren't always like that. Mm -hmm. You used to mm -hmm. always love Jolly Ranchers when I was six. Right. <laughs> it, it's giving people permission to change, allowing yourself to change. But what I'm noticing now is that, it's this growing irritation on social media <laughs> where people think this call out culture, where people think like they own something about you, like they didn't call it out or be nasty. What are Twitter thugs or thumb thugs? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think for me, what I've learned is I'd rather be me than anybody else on this earth. Mm -hmm. I love everybody, but there's only one me. Right, right. I think the journey to accepting all of who you are is difficult for some people. Yes. So you're you're talking like it's coming from experience. Like you have experience of not being who you were to becoming who you are. Is, I think, is, mm -hmm. Am I saying it correctly? Um, somewhat. Um, I think that I've evolved. Okay. Ah, yes, I have arrived. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm always on a journey to arriving. Yes, but I feel like I've evolved. Even Rochelle, you remember back in undergrad? Yeah, it, it evolved, and so have you. Mm -hmm. I think that everybody, biological life, is permitted to evolve. Mm -hmm. I think the issue is when people think they have control over how you evolve. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what would, what would you more. say to a person who is in the midst of evolving? You mm -hmm. know, because that's a very uncomfortable space. Like, should I do this? I go back, but I'm I'm really don't feel I don't feel that way anymore. But to make them happy, I might just do that or be this person. So, what do you say to somebody that's in the middle of that? In the middle of like their evolution of growing of mm -hmm. maturing um i would ask them what what's motivating you what's stimulating this mm -hmm. is it the lord you get a profound word from the lord or have you been watching too much reality tv mm -hmm. uh, are you trying to live someone else's life or is this an authentic moment of growth and maturity mm -hmm. um my second thing would be are you comfortable in your own skin mm -hmm. are you going to be okay if other people don't accept the fact that you have grown right. you know yeah. i'm from ash from north carolina and there are some people that cannot see me past being april and randy's little girl <laughs> and that's okay i love Asheville, though it's a nice look cute getaway spot it is it is for the weekend you know what not to be off topic i had went Wait. to Asheville in december that was my first time ever going okay what up there we had a cute cabin whatever coming down that mountain it had snowed the night before oh and we had to get down the mountain because it was checkout time 
Y'all, I was praying the whole way down there. Like, Lord, if you get me through this, please just make me get out yeah, this yeah, mountain. Y'all yeah, yeah. ain't never been so scared in my life. I said never again when I go in December. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. It, it's been times I've had to go home and my mom will call me. Hey, it's about to snow. Get up here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Hey, a, you should me, be good with driving through the snow. That ain't my that ain't my forte. <laughs> I'm well, not I'm like, that ain't me. Up the mountain when it's snowing and it's slick. If mm -hmm. it, that's the that's the issue. Mm. Yeah, that's the issue. I need 85 and sunny. If I, <laughs> right. that's, I need 85 and sunny. I like fall weather. Give me a coat, honey. I love the <laughs> <laughs> I like spring. You like spring? Yeah. It's the you allergies with me. Just, it's just too much. Yeah. Pollen. Yeah, I don't like the summer. It's too sticky here. Sti really? Okay, okay. It's the bugs yeah. for me. Oh yeah, I love I summer. I don't do outside. No yeah, jacket. Outside. And give no me a cook in, jacket. not a cook out. Give me a cook. Give me a cook in. I'll fix my plate outside, okay. but I'm going in the house. Well, so okay. you know, Tanika, I was about to invite you to my cookout tomorrow, but since you say you don't need no, go, I, I, I'll be good. Look, yeah, I'll be good. nah, you, no, you like like I'll do it for you. I because it's spring. <laughs> I told you I like spring, so I'm I'm good with that. It's the summer that I cannot, I can't take. It's just. So yes. if I had one in July, I don't invite you to the one in July. My daughter, my oldest daughter, Bria, birthday is July 2nd. And she always does stuff outside. So I'm willing to make the sacrifice. It's, it's fine. Just I feel special. Have my little fan, you know. Like, I might have a little tent, you know, to hide myself from everybody. But I'm coming. First of all, <laughs> speaking of fans, I don't know if y'all know this, but Just James, he has... Uh, what's the the fans you carry? Like you could put it around your neck and it just constantly blow. <clears throat> he, yeah, he has one of those. Yeah, see, I that know. was my face when I first seen it. Boy. I said, oh, "What is that?" <laughs> Y'all, it's a personal fan and it it just blows air. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <sighs> but anyways, yeah. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I ain't even gonna hate on that because I might have to look it up. I'm not that level of extra yet, but I'm not gonna see how to do that. I might have to go get one of them. I'm already extra, so I'm okay. All right, I ain't look, he's talking about stop talking about me. We are being real. Is that not the name of the, the show? All right, baby. I, I ain't got that yet. I'm not that extra, but I can get there. Yeah, yeah, I ain't there yet, but I might have to Google that when we get out the phone. Right. Might need to get one of them. Show up at the next family function with one around my neck. Oh, listen, don't, don't, don't. Just I said, wait a minute. Anyways, let's go back. Let's go back because there's a lot to unpack with this topic. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people out there who are suffering mentally mm -hmm. because they don't know how to accept who they are and who they are not. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about who you are not, especially as a woman. Um, I feel like we jump on every fashion trend, majority yes. women. Every fashion trend. I, what is it? Um, the BLWs now. Then it's um, oh, what is it? Um, it's a it's a certain nail design out this now, and everybody's like jumping on it. Trans. Yeah, it's like trans. Let's let's unpack that a little bit. Tanika, what you got for me? <sighs> it's I think the biggest thing is social media. You know, mm -hmm. we see these people, we see these celebrities, you know, and it's like, oh, I want this, I want that. Me, I feel like I am the black sheep of my family. Like when I come in, you may not ever see anybody else with what on what I have on. And I love that. Mm -hmm. I like being different. I like eating different places that can spark a conversation, not just, oh, I ate at TGI Fridays, which I'm not saying it's, it's anything wrong with it, but I may say, oh, I ate an improper pig. What's what's that? What is that? Let's talk about it. Exact your response, exactly. So it's over in the South Park area, but they have greens, baked beans, macaroni and cheese. It's in the Cotswold area. Mm -hmm. And I won a gift card from there one day and I went in there and I'm like, oh my goodness. And the food wasn't really that expensive, but so many people are like, I'm only going to go to Applebee's. I'm only going to go to Chili's. Mm -hmm. But it's like expand, like just Google something one day and you may be surprised. You may go somewhere and like, oh man, the food was 
awesome or they had great music or the customer service. So me, I like being different. Like if I'm going to eat out, it's going to be different. And it's going to be the topic of conversation for about 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> That's me. So I'm different. I, I can't, I can't get with the trends. Like I, I like being set apart. I, we were born to stand out. I, I don't want to fit in with the crew. Like, so I think it's more so social media though, because I was like that, you know, it's like everybody's going to Cabo. It was like one year where everybody was going to Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. going to <laughs> Every year it's the getting day. missing. That year they was getting missing. This okay. year is Cabo. Mm -hmm. This year, well, all I'm I, seeing I went to Cabo. No, you see, you was on the and lived my whole life. Well, uh, well, I want to go. Like I'm supposed to go at the end of this year, but it's like that's the trend. So every year you have a different trip. Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, like everybody has the different things that they do. Me personally, like even like for Christmas, I went to Key West one year. I was like, I'm not staying here. I don't want to stay in town. Mm -hmm. Let's go out of town for Easter one year. I asked the girls, I was like, hey, you want to dress up or you want to go out of town? They were like, we'll take out of town. Mm -hmm. So I like being different. I, I'm, I, I can't really say I'm like anybody in my family. <laughs> Because they're like, it's Tanika. Here she come. She going to be doing something different. She got a different purse. She got a different hairdo. Can you remember a time, maybe when you was younger, before you even became this woman that you are today, do you remember a time where you were not yourself? Or you were suffering and battling with the issue? Ooh. So I will say this, because this is just be you. This is being real. I just went through that. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt like I was like, I'm just not good enough. I struggled with like my self-esteem and depression, suicide, you know, when I was younger, but even within the situation I just went through, I became somebody that I wasn't. And in the process of trying to build somebody up, I lost myself. So I'm now to the point where it's like, this is me. I have stretch marks. Okay. So, so wait, let me see. You said you you became someone that you didn't recognize yes and then in the process of rebuilding yourself rebuild so trying to build that person up i lost myself because okay. i was trying to be something that i wasn't that i wasn't meant to be like mm -hmm. i was trying to so it was like basically i was told that i had potential instead of just being looked at for who i was so I tried to live up to that person's. Okay, so um, I'm gonna need you to give me some more details. I, I'm, a, I'm a detail chick, and I, I like I like comfy, I like fat details too. And you know, so are you saying? I, I'm assuming you're talking about weight loss. Yes. Okay, girl, just say that. Well, weight loss and other things. So not okay. just weight loss, but more so like just acceptance, like. One thing about women, we we change like our weights, our weight fluctuates. Definitely. You can look at 2019 and you might have been small. Mm -hmm. Then you might have had too many burgers in 2020 and you you were well, COVID or whatever. So mm -hmm. you got bigger. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you look at social media and you see these women that are snatched, it's like, yeah, she got a waist trainer on though. Like she ain't mm -hmm. eating. She throwing up when she get off social media. Right. Like, so I was like, you know what? It's okay to have a little bit of meat on my bones. Because while everybody else cold in the house, I'm good and warm. You know, so it's like, it out, yeah. you know, even when I was younger, I was really, really small. So when I started mm -hmm. having kids and I started getting thick, I'm like, ooh, I like this. But then if another person is like, well, you know, you're a little too big. Or you don't need that donut today. Or you don't need that cake today. And it's like, but I want to eat cake because that's me. I have a sweet tooth. So I feel mm -hmm. like it was like, I was, you know, killing myself inside. Cause I'm like, I really want a funnel cake. When we go to the <laughs> fair, I don't want to not get no fun. Why? This is why I came. I don't want to hear, I don't want to be here for no rides, no nothing. I'm mm -hmm. here for the funnel cake. So it's like you standing there and you're waiting for that funnel cake. And that person's like, you really don't need it. But they're enabling you to eat it, but then you're gonna have to hear about it the next day. It's like a whole yeah. guilty right thing. Right. So know. now that that person or you know that situation is gone, I'm still trying to reprogram myself mm. because I'll have ice cream 
And in the midst of me eating, I'm like, I don't need this ice cream. And I feel bad. So mm-hmm. it's like I faked for so long. Mm. I don't, it's like, oh man, I can eat this now. I can go here now because I don't have that pressure on me anymore. And I can be me. You know, mm-hmm. it, it feels so good. It does. But wait, honey, I'm thick, thick thighs. Look, like it came from my mama. And I love it and I'm embracing it because it's a beautiful thing. Like, and I feel like when you want to change yourself, acknowledge who you are first. And if you say, you know what, when I walk up the steps, baby, I'm breathing hard. It might be time for me to go ahead and and lay off the biscuits. But then if you say, okay, you know what, I walked upstairs today, I got up one flight and I ain't breathe hard, I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. It's acknowledging those small victories. So that's what I'm learning to do now. And it's, it's a process, but I definitely feel better. I, I do. I do. And I lost 50 pounds in the process of not trying. <laughs> See, so, and you lost it your way in being yourself. I did. So I didn't go on these detox or anything like that. I more so ate in moderation. I cut down on the stress and just really being my toughest critic. You know, but you know what? Stress will yes. bring on a lot of weight. Y'all, I Ooh, had- yes. 10 pounds from January to now, I gained 10 pounds. I can believe it. Stress is a killer. True indeed. True Would you guys say like something, Dr. Evans? Oh, mm-mm. mm-mm oh. Not really. <laughs> oh, okay. Back. Come on. I mean, weight loss, weight gain, I'm very, I'm very secure in, mm-hmm. in who I am. Um, whether it's big, small, whatever. And and then I even when I coach women, I'm very clear about don't use qualifiers when you talk about yourself. I'm beautiful, not for a chocolate girl. I'm beautiful, period. Exactly. When people come at you with qualifiers, most of the time it is projection. Um, right. It's really about how they feel about themselves and things of that nature. But this cyber bullying that happens, I see on social media and body mm-hmm. shaming, I don't, I don't want no part. Right. <laughs> I, do, I do my part as far as what I do with women and how the, you know how I'm impacting my little community is making sure people are okay with who they are and someone else is irritating you because they're not being authentic, acknowledge the irritation, but realize they ain't gonna undo with you. Exactly, <laughs> right. Does that make sense? Like, no, yeah. no, no, live your life. Yeah, and I had to learn that in my adult years, um, especially when people react, they could be like nasty and rude. I'm gonna I'm check you one or two times, but um, <laughs> it's a you problem. It ain't a me. And now it's a you problem, it's, it's oh, you. I have, I have an example. <laughs> oh, it's good. Oh, yeah. God saves me. Oh, he saves me. So I had to go <laughs> preach at, at, a, at a church. And I walked in from the back. And I didn't have anybody with me because all my the people that served with me are, were gone. Careful. So I walked in. And I seen this girl look at me. Like, you you know when women look you up and down as, as one of them. You know what I'm talking about? I said. Did you know her? No. Did not, I do not know this lady. I bet <laughs> you know you, though. Right. That's so, normally how it is. They know you or know of you. Of you, yeah. And I'm I'm bubbly. I don't have that little thing. Hey, how you doing? You know. And they're putting my pack on and stuff. And she goes, Yeah, you, you might want to turn to the side. You know, big girls gotta make sure your angle is right. <gasps> I know you lying. Ooh. What? No. You, you, you know how. Have you ever seen you on on Netflix? I have. The crazy boy, the crazy guy. Yeah, yeah. So it's like this voice. Like I'm talking to myself. Like everything has paused, and I hear myself. D, don't don't get this girl a look. But it was like the Lord was quick. Like D, now you know she's projecting. You know she's got some issues. Don't respond. Mm. And so I looked at her, and I I literally had a straight face. I'm putting my pack on me, so I'm not really you know. Making sure my, my sound is right. I look at her after she says, and I goes, <laughs> I'm not worried about that. And I move on. Mm. Her face was like, it, it was like, oh, I can't even wow. explain it. Like she felt like maybe I shouldn't have said that or almost embarrassed. Right. Mm-hmm. So afterwards, after a little service and everything, I ended up praying for her. Girl, shut your mouth. The Lord Ooh. led you over there to pray for her. Let's pray for her. And the first thing I did was address that situation outside the microphone. 
Mm. I, I don't believe in prophesying nothing out of no flesh. I, oh, no, 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 I don't pray none of that. Not none of it. So mm. I knew the word of the Lord for her. I knew it. I said, yeah, you you do with X, Y, Z. Because when we was over there, you said blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Immediately crying, immediately repenting. Okay, cool. So so let's work on what's going on with you. And mm -hmm. deliverance took, took place. Now, yes. I started taking that moment and internalized it. Mm. It could have messed up the whole world coming for. Right. It could have messed me up. Right. Yes. Somebody let me know that comment had nothing to do with me. Right. Mm -hmm. It had everything to do with how she felt. Now, right. did she have permission to project that on me? No, I revoked that. Mm -hmm. In my response, I said, I'm good. But I think women, as we mature, we have to learn what comments to respond to mm -hmm. and yes. what comments to let you know to let ride i'm not gonna always give my my pearls to swine i've done that in the past mm -hmm. and so i'd rather clutch my pearls than give it right right, right. So I'm, I'm learning that i'm learning that i'm very secure in me you don't have to like me i'm good right. with that right i'm good with it but the moment it affects me that you don't like me i gotta do a check does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's mm -hmm. how I feel. I do a little, okay. I'm offended that she said this and that. What's going on with me? Is that rejection? Did, what, what, what's that? Is that this? And you get to the root of it. And if you can make amends, you make amends. But at the end of the day, I have a good circle of, of people and family and friends that love me, and I'm good. And even if I didn't have that, I would have other things that make me feel like I am okay. That's right. And, and you know, you mentioned having a good circle and it's this very important. You got to have a strong circle. Got you. to. Yes. I mean, a very strong circle, not somebody that's iffy, somebody you can call and they may not and call you three days later. That ain't in your circle. Right. Somebody that you know that you can pray with and get a prayer through. They can go help me on your behalf more than just financial like you got to have a strong circle around you that and can like, call you out when you're not being you that's yes. right yes because i was in a little situation baby i'll testify uh -huh. yeah tell it tell it that <laughs> i i wasn't able to be my authentic self mm. how did it make you feel though like what was yeah. your emotions? God, I'm disappointed. Right. I had to work through so much because I couldn't understand what was wrong with me. Right. Mm. Like, I know what the Lord says about me. I know what to get up and I do this because I don't do things for performance. I know what right. God says it. I do it. I'm looking for applause. It's his glory, not mine. Exactly. But it was, I can't deny the basic need for acceptance in every human. Mm. And I felt like I kept trying with this individual and it was always something I wasn't doing well. I felt, you know, Tanika, I, I think we were on the same page there. And, and, and whoo, I thank God for Google. <laughs> I put in my little symptoms and it said emotional abuse. Mm. And then I said, oh, abuse, that's strong. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. And and what I realized is yes, that person I had to, and, and it was multiple people. But wow! I didn't, I didn't realize that until after I identified what was working against me. But I had to own my part, and my part was that I was an empath. Wow! Wow! My part was that I gave an unnecessary part of myself to a person and said, "Please approve." Mm. Right. Um, and I own it. Why is that? Like, why are we, we as women, always long for that approval? It's, like, it's just for it. You should. I, I want my husband to think I'm cute. Hello? <laughs> what you talking about? Tell me I'm cute. It, the basic need for belonging and approval, yeah. it's normal. You want mm. your kids to think you a good mama? Don't be in class talking about, I hate my mama right now. Right. Okay. <laughs> Uh -uh. I do check ins every week. Uh -huh. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. To, I'm good this week. Want, let's have a conversation. I'm not trying to cause no trauma bonds with my kids. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, what happens is when the Lord feels like your need to be liked and loved is more than you love Him, that you mm -hmm. start doing stuff 
you know, out of order. Like as much as I love feeling like I belong, there is a space to where the Lord makes sure that there's a fine line between wanting to belong to the point my life becomes a performance rather than a life worth lived. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Say that one more time, cause they, I don't think they, I don't think I, I fight a Facebook crowd heard you. <laughs> right, can't I, don't remember, I just remember I said something like, "I got to make sure that my life is not like a performance, but the Lord wants me to live a life that's worth living." And, mm -hmm. and when it comes to relationships with with a man, I'll, I'll go ahead, honey. Are we gonna yes. <laughs> relationships or whatever with, with, with a man, mm -hmm. I I'm going to honor him. I I want to be loved by him. I want to be seen by him. I want to be adored by him. Yeah. But that is not my existence for a living. If yeah. you so choose to not love me, I'm going to be affected. But not to the extent that I want my life to live because you want my life to begin with. Mm -hmm. right. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes perfect sense. And so I think that women that have had seeds of rejection placed on them from childhood, from friendships, from issues whether it be image whether it be whatever parent those, issue, issues everything those seeds are planted i'm a big girl let's say something i hate when people say you're cute for a big girl i i literally don't even say thank you because you're trying to <laughs> can i just not be cute yeah <laughs> you're you're trying my my favorite one and i'm saying this for real because i know this this plagues a lot of people mm -hmm. you would not believe how many people told me that they like the old d when i started wearing like hair like wigs now, I, I, I used to have natural hair. I still do. I have natural hair, long, whatever. And I so I don't want me a little wig, child. I'm a big and I had people tell me, I like the old D. No, 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 no. Let, let me tell you what you like. You liked the D that was accessible. Yeah. Yeah. You, you liked the version of me that you felt like you could attain to, mm. that you could control. But the moment I begin to mature into a person that you could no longer figure out. Exactly. It was a problem. Mm -hmm. And that's called a word curse. Mm -hmm. And so like having that. to unlearn all of that, it took me a minute. Unfortunately, I did not realize how many word curses were plaguing me. Because mm -hmm. I just thought, ignore it, D, you know, whatever. God is with me, you know. And so, so time, what is, when you say that, is it more like triggers? It, it can be both, but okay. when okay, so a triggers when if someone says, Oh, I, I like the old you, you're probably triggered to want to revert back to the old you. But right. if God called you out from being the old you, why would you want to go back there to please them? Exactly. But if enough people tell you that, you'll feel like, Oh, am I really being myself? Mm -hmm. right. Go back to being the old me because that old me is more loved, that right. old me is more accepted. It's comfortable. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's comfortable. And what I call that a form of a word curse is because it's almost like a spell. Mm, exactly. That makes sense. And, right. and, and again, some, some people call it strongholds. It, it is. You know, mm -hmm. you don't care about someone out the street telling you they wish they were the old you. Who are you? You mean nothing. Exactly. <laughs> but when people have influence over your life, if exactly. your best friend tell you that, if your brother tell you that, if your pastor tell you that, the enemy right. loves to use people that actually has an influence in your life. That's right. And again, I made the mistake of thinking I could shrug it off. You know, right. say, oh, that bothers me, but I'm good. You know, God with me. A year later, they, they keep saying stuff like that. It bothers me, but I'm good. The Lord is with me. Until I literally went to an altar for something to pray for something else and this person laid hands on me and said i need to break off every word curse that has been said to you my entire back was on fire and I, I'm, I'm, I'm here with devils being cast on all stuff listen i was bit over and i screaming it was mm. like somebody had lit my back on fire mm. and i said wow and this person did not know me did not, there's nobody gonna know. Yeah. And begin to call out the things that were said to me. There's no way he could have. Mm. And he said, those are word curses and they've been accumulating onto you. The Lord wants you to be completely free. Mm. Wow. Now was this something that you was like seeking God for as well? Right. Freedom? <clears throat> oh, well. Mm. Yes, yeah, but I didn't know I was asking for that. Got you. You you know how you be praying for one thing. Just chat. Another one, yeah. Yeah, you know. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted, I wanted something. I, I wanted something specific. I wanted things to work out a certain way. Catch my right. Head. Gotcha. 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 And the Lord said, because I had dreams, visions, blah, blah, blah. and the Lord said to me, Dee, I changed my mind. I said, no, you can't do that. No, 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 no. Ready? That's right. the devil speaking to me. It's in my heart, and you got to give me my desire. The devil is like, I right. said, I'm not the devil. Oh, that, no, that wasn't the Lord. What, what was you? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I began to go back in my little Bible. Mm -hmm. I got my little divinity degree chair. I had to pull the commentaries. <laughs> and as I went through Exodus and Leviticus, I, I cry real tears, not no fake ones. I seen how many covenants God had to renew with Israel. He changed his mind every time. Jesus is God changing his mind. We deserve death. Mm -hmm. He said, look, I'm going to help y'all out because y'all can't keep it together. Behold, there will be a son. Huh? Mm -hmm. And the Lord came back to me in my prayer time and said, D, I changed my mind. I'm going to have to because of the actions of others I'm, I'm i'm going to recalibrate you and i said you can do that this is not i just i thought that it was going to be like this and the lord began to show me the word free mm. I said, well, I, i'm disappointed right now i don't know if i want to do <laughs> right, right. right was coming the way that i had imagined right yeah. and so i went from irritated with god angry with god to disappointed in god to surrender that don't mean i wow. don't like it it wow. meant I had to surrender everything I thought. And wow. it's a difference between surrender and failure. Mm. Mm. It, it, it's not the same thing. I thought I had failed. I felt like I was going to be embarrassed. I felt like, God, they're gonna, this is going to happen. The Lord <laughs> said, sit in the surrender. So I didn't get churchy. I'm not trying to prophesy my way out. I'm not trying to sow seeds on my way out. I sat in the middle of all the mess. That's what the surrender is. When you stop trying to change it and you sit in it. And then mm. it's like you sit in a pool of mess and you're waiting for God to speak. You fully take in everything that's going around you. I took in my father dying. Mm -hmm. I took in how that was going to change my family dynamic. I took in the loss of relationship. I took in how it was going to change everything. Because my life was set up real different. I sat in all of the unknowns. And when I finally released, well, Lord, it's evident I can't do nothing with you. That is when he spoke to me and gave me direction. And he didn't say, over oh, the next five years, you're going to do this. No. I felt a peace that came upon me that told me, be lead and you will be free. Wow. And I, after that, I, it wasn't no you know cloud the size of a man's hand in my room. It was painful. But when I ended it, when I came to that resolve and I made it official. How did you get there to the official? Because I know that, well, I don't know, but maybe there were some moments where you wanted to resort back and say, maybe. Oh, went back and forth maybe. like 25 times. <laughs> but I, I had to keep, I had a list. Thank you. That's probably a really good question. I made a list of, see, there was a, I'm trying to make sure I'm reading it right because the same be watching. I, Girl, they make up their own words and hearings. But yeah, I'm, but I ain't scared. It, it, the devil is a liar. Okay, I know that's so right. Man, clap for me if you want to. So I eat witches for breakfast, and then so I'm not with it. In Jesus' name, don't pray with me. So, um, there was a blog that had a questionnaire. You need to answer this blog if you feel like you're a victim of emotional abuse or you're being manipulated. It was like a hundred and something questions. I answered yes to the majority of them. So I printed it out and I kept reading through the list about three or four times a day. No, you did. Every moment I was like, oh, you know, but you know, this and, and this. I would go back and one of the questions said, makes you feel rejected. Mm. Then there's a cycle that comes with like a narcissistic cycle. Mm -hmm. And it's like wanting, hoping, loving, be hurt forgiving and starting it back over again. And I begin to think about how many times I went through that. Wow. And uh, here, here's the crazy part. It wasn't just with one person. Again, when the Lord identified that spirit of manipulation and control in my life, I realized it wasn't one person. It was a string of them. Wow. It was a string. I had been pruned 
to accept that level of abuse. It didn't just come upon yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Things have been playing yeah. along, you know, in my life for that. So I went through that list every day and I said, well, God, I don't want that. I want to be free. I want to be free. So I did it. And then I was like, whew. And I started reading, reading articles about people that came through controlling situations and abuse mm-hmm. situations, even spiritual abuse and things like that. And to see that they left their relationship eight or nine times. To, wait, to, wait, wait, go back. Mm-hmm. You said spiritual abuse. Abuse. That's what manipulation is. When you make promises you don't intend to keep, and you play with my heart and my spirit and my emotions, and, and that and that's not even a man. That could be. It was not just a man. It was a slew of people. It was like when I recognized con- that controlling devil, that manipulating spirit. It mm-hmm. was not just him. It was a lot of people. Right. Wow. Now, when it connected to him, it, it was like the enemy said, gotcha. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, 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 no. I see this here. Mm-hmm. And once I became okay with, they're going to come against me. But God, if you're for me. Mm-hmm. If, if you're, God, if you, you, go. if you right. are for me. Baby, you let me tell you something. I ended all the, the, the stuff. Very clear. Um, y'all don't have no control of me. I went into prayer. Prayer. Not no, not lay me down to sleep. No, I prayed specifically against the spirit of control and manipulation in my life. I began to repent because I had a role to play also. I gave mm-hmm. them a piece of myself I probably wasn't supposed to. Um, whether it was my trust, whether it was um unrealistic expectations. God, I repent. God, I repent for not looking at the signs i chose to believe a lie because i wanted something that that's my fault i own it lord i own wandering in that wilderness right. but now that i am free i read mm-hmm. in your word when you said these egyptians that you see today you will see no more mm-hmm. I, and so i confessed it now was it easy no oh and they came Ooh, the enemy mm-hmm. came with a vengeance but i stood flat footed and I began to read the word of the Lord, and I used boundaries. So yes, yes, I'm speaking in tongues in my prayer language. You know, at home, I'm very clear about my repentance. I'm very clear about the deliverance. I got in therapy, but when they came up against me, asking me for stuff, trying to own my time, all that stuff, hi, no. Yes, Not and I know way. I know you got a lot of. What you mean? What you mean? You you did you did I know what you got a lot of why don't you just no, I'm not gonna do that. See, I, I thought I could ignore people into leaving me alone. And the Lord convicted me of that. No, no. Tell them no. Yes. No. Yeah. Sever it. Let there be nothing left un- unspoken and unsaid. Right. <clears throat> and that was I, I will just say. When the Lord brought me out of that, oh, thank you. <laughs> I remember being at an altar. And I was working at an altar praying for somebody, and everybody doesn't be deliverance. Like it, deliverance is something that's so easy for me. Mm-hmm. It always has been. I don't think about it. It shouldn't be laborsome anyway. It's not my power. So I'm very free when I do deliverance. When I'm praying for people, I don't have. I don't want any burdens on me. If I feel anything pressing in my spirit, I'm not laying hands on nobody. Because when I flow, I want to make sure it's the Lord. See what I'm right. saying? No flesh, right. no performance, just God. Right. And so I'm very childlike, very daughter-like in deliverance. I'm very like, yeah, the Lord says, da da da, come out of there in Jesus' name. I laid my hands on this girl and I said, ooh. And I I saw that devil that had tried to have his hand around my throat at night. I saw it clear as day. Mm. And I prayed. I got in her ear and I said, I see the spirit of torment that mm. was set upon you. She began to shake uncontrollably. I said, get your hands off of her. Mm-hmm. And she started grabbing her own throat. Mm. I said, I said, Take your hands off of her in the name of Jesus. It it's like something smacked its hand back. And mm-hmm. she began to holler and scream. And I I put my hands on her. I said, I will pray for you to be delivered. Mm-hmm. But you got to make sure you got this. She said, get it out of me. <laughs> get wow. it out. That's what she said. Pray. Girl, get it out. In the in the name of Jesus. 
<laughs> and in that moment, I, I literally didn't pray for nobody else. I was in the corner bawling um, because the enemy tried to kill me. <laughs> I, mm. I mean that physically. I mean it spiritually. I don't know how far I could have gone. I don't. But to know that the Lord brought me out. Yes. And then positioned me to be at an altar. Mm. With this prayer. Sorry, I don't mean to cry. But knowing that the Lord saved me. Mm -hmm. So that I can see that girl be delivered. That changed me. Yeah. That, that legit changed everything. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, when Luke, the Gospel of Luke, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires that he may sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. But I prayed for you. And when you are converted, that you strengthen your brethren. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I take deliverance so seriously. Because I know how the enemy wanted me to be bound. Right. Mm. So it's an honor for me to lay hands and go, get your hands off of her, you demon of control. You mm -hmm. spirit of manipulation. You devil of rejection. I've seen them demons try to bury me. Wow. Mm. Mm -mm. No. Right. And so I, I, I don't play that. So seeing her be delivered, I said, oh, okay, Lord. Th thank you for bringing me through to see what i thought i couldn't live through yes easy for god mm -hmm. oh, mm. what girl that's why you gotta just be you yeah. you yeah. have to. to be you and most of my when i do deliverance ministry i can't remember everything i do i can't remember all the demons that come out but a lot of them are control wow rejection based torment based wow wrath based Bondages mm. lately, I mean, the past year, even through COVID, it and, and in the name of Jesus, spirit of control, release her. The people will start manifesting, and it'd be women. Wow, in wow. emotionally abusive situations, mm -hmm. with women that are the emotional abuser. Mm. Wow. <laughs> that operate in manipulation, that operate in envy, that operate in jealousy. Right. Wow. And again, the purity of my heart is I know I would not be here. It had, if it had not been for the grace of God. <laughs> so when I lay hands on a person, I am not trying to say Z is casting it out. Right. I'm laying hands as a daughter saying, my daddy said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't get the glory. Right. It don't belong to you. It, it's all him. It's right. all him. So it's there's funny. a power in being yourself. And it sometimes is. it's not as easy as buying a self-help book. Sometimes it's not exactly. as easy as listening to a podcast. Sometimes there is a spiritual bondage mm -hmm. that has you held back. And there's no shame in saying, please help me. Please pray for me because I feel like this is this get it off in the name of Jesus right yeah. <laughs> and right. move forward move forward yes that's all I got but first you got to get there of wanting it because I can want you to be free all day yeah but if you're still wanting to hold on it's going to be hard to break those chains and people love their devils because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're so comfortable with it that, that makes them feel sleep with them sleep with them I'll, do you remember the movie The Exorcist? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did. I never seen the old. Well, I seen the show, so it was an adapt, adaptation of it. But the little girl became possessed through an imaginary friend that came through a doll, right? Mm -hmm. Slept with the doll. The doll was there the whole time, waiting for the moment to like get it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like some people again those scenes of discord, of abuse, of hurt of rejection, of disappointment, whatever. They're not just there to be cute. They're there to grow. Mm -hmm. right. And the enemy be like, okay, activate. And you be 35. I ain't never felt like this before. But it was that seed that came in when you were six. Yeah. It was that yep. seed that came in when you didn't hear from that last breakup. Mm. Mm. And so when it comes to just being you, one of the pillars of my ministry, period is is authenticity yes i'm i'm gonna be 100 if i'm not feeling it i'm gonna tell you 
Right. If I'm going to sin, I'm going to tell you. Because I'm right. going to tell you. If I smell it, we about to go on this altar, can't go. It's what it is. Mm. I don't believe in being fake because the Lord knows anything. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. The freedom from being judged, the freedom from not being liked, that's what I pray for women. That they're okay. If they like you, cool. If they don't like you, whatever. One of the most profound little things the Lord told me was, where are your accusers now, baby? They talked all this trash. Where are they? That's a good question. Right. Probably somewhere stalking. I don't know. But. <laughs> Plotting and scheming. Right. Sometimes used by the enemy. And so I have to realize we do wrestle not against flesh and blood. But at the end of the day, I know my calling. I know my purpose. And, mm -hmm. and. If I'm so caught up in who doesn't like me that I can't complete my assignment, yeah, that's right. a me problem. Exactly. And that's, that's why it's so important to be secure within yourself because right. if not you can be easily persuaded. True indeed. Easily. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> um Dr. Evans, that testimony was so I me up here crying child i be trying right. so powerful yeah, right. if you guys have any um questions for dr evans please put them in the comments don't forget to like and share this live as well dr evans are you doing any coaching um for young women in regards to that maybe i should um right now i'm doing one for business that's going to start at the end of the month called the cornea plan it's going to be eight weeks. Um, I'm helping people build their businesses. Um, I will be, I will have a coaching group at the end of the year to close this year with a bang. I think and you I'm should. Also, yes, and you I'm also going to have a coaching group at the beginning of the year. So I always bring in the year with at least six weeks of solid coaching groups. Mm -hmm. um, but this year I want to do, I want to end the year with one as well. I feel like we need to tie up 2022. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I really want to do that. So look out October, November. Please follow me. I always, you know, uh, you're right. Maybe I need to do one. Yeah, that'd be I, good. That. I wouldn't have said if I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> yeah, you okay. need to do it. It was in my spirit. So okay, um, okay. I received. I, 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 and the reason I'm saying that, you know, all jokes aside, the reason I'm saying is that your testimony alone. Is changing lives period not only are you changing lives in the flesh and with your acts of service but just speaking and giving that experience to women who are looking for anybody to save them right it's massive and, and I ain't no telling how many women you you're going to reach just from this one video alone yeah you have to have some type of coaching Coach classes um, something because that is really needed yeah. um, it's it's needed i I'm, i promise you it's it's needed please do i'm, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna okay. do it I, <laughs> my do life it. is so busy it's but it it's i love seeing the people of god deliver I, and, mm -hmm. and whatever that looks like whether it's in a coaching setting whatever um it, yeah Literally, I'm going to Colorado in October, and I'm excited about it. Cause child, you want to Um, log mine. So it's Ooh, about an hour, there an hour and some change outside of that. And okay, going for like four or five days. This is my third time going. I love the people. Like I'm pretty much. A oh wow! Like, hey, you know, but being able to minister freely. Let's see. That, that's my word. Free. The Lord has delivered me, healed me. You know. Crazy. Okay, so when you say um to be able to minister freely, are you saying let me have you explain what that means to yeah. people? Okay. Um ooh, I know a lot of female preachers, mm -hmm. whether they be prophets or whatever, even just fivefold, even singers, worship leaders, that minister in bondage, not because they mm -hmm. want to be bound, mm -hmm. it's because of circumstances around them. They, gotcha. They're constricted at home. Right. They're going through in their marriage. They're going through with their mom, their dad. They're unsure. And so when they step on the stage, it's not like they're worshiping God out of, God, I love you, and I'm going to do this. It's worshiping God, but you can hear the sound of, oh, God, please help me. Mm. And they're ministering. And again, mm. there's a time and place. The Lord knows I have cried out 
out to the father when I'm leading worship on time. Like I'm I'm a minister, but I need you to help me. Mm -hmm. Right. But we're all human. So. Exactly. We Hello. are. Right. And, and whether I whatever I have going on in my life, I'm part of my mission is to help women live free. If right. you've got an issue, God, you know, um, I ain't really feeling this. <clears throat> I need this amount of money. Um, I'm not sure what you was doing last year because you promised me this and I don't see it. Um, I don't look at it more. Um, you know, we got no I don't seat. like my job, Lord. I did cuss him out yesterday, you know, and I'll probably do it again because I did like it. It made me feel great. Um, <laughs> but you, pray and you go, God, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you're for me. And I'm going I'm to keep my mouth shut. God, help me be under the power of the Holy Ghost. It's authenticity. Right. So when you step on the on the platform to minister, when you get on your prayer call, when you go to your job, when you talk to your husband, there's no weight. It's free. Uh, it's human to be angry. It's human to be upset. It's even human to sin. Yep. But yep. be authentic. I don't want to sin freely. God, I don't want to upset you, but I'm human. Help me. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's the a hymn called. is strong. There's a hymn, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Mm -hmm. Prone to leave the God I love, but here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for mm -hmm. thy courts above. That come thou found. That's the, that's the hymn. So the writer is saying, prone to wonder. My heart is Lord. Lord, I feel it. I feel it running off, okay? Prone to leave the God I love, but here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Lord, help me, because you know if my, my flesh got resurrection power. But God, <laughs> if you keep me, I'll be kept. Mm -hmm. right. And so every time I minister, you, even if you see me sing, I you'll see me mumble stuff. Like I put the mic down. God, you know, I'm with you. God, right. I ain't like this. My mic ain't right. That little girl pissed me off. I got up here. You know, I ain't. <laughs> but God, if you with me, I repent. But the one, I, I, I'm big on repentance. I'm big on acknowledgement. But sin, sin I, I've seen and sin I don't see God. But when I get up there in the presence of God, when I sing, when I minister, whatever. You can feel like God. Why? Why was I against you? Why? Why? Why does my heart just want to disobey you? But when I get in your presence, I don't understand how anybody else could want to do anything else but worship you. Mm -hmm. That's the freedom I'm talking about. That I don't have to be like, oh, um, I can't call out this demon of lust because I was sleeping with such and such last night. Freedom. Mm. I can't call out poverty because you know all my accounts is negative. Freedom. Got you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Thank you for explaining that. Because yeah, that was a good that explanation. Was a long explanation. I probably it was a good one. It was a great one. <laughs> I just, I just wanted you to explain it because people, they can take it different ways. Right. And your freedom is your freedom, and I want you to freely express what that is. Right. So there's no misunderstanding. Yeah. So yes, um, Mr. Nika, do you? I, um, we're not going to hold Dr. Evans. As long, do you have any questions for her? Um, a great conversation. I really want to yeah. invite you back for a part two. Yeah, um, let me know. Maybe another topic that we can, <laughs> uh, you know. So, I do have a question When are you most fully yourself? When am I fully myself? You know, if you would have asked me this. Five months ago, I would have said I am fully myself when I am sitting in Starbucks with my AirPods turned up to the max with my <laughs> MacBook opened with 35 screens going and my venti black tea lemonade sweetened with seven pumps of plastic with light eyes. <laughs> All right. I feel like I am fully myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, how you do it, Mo? Right. But when I went to Cabo, here we go. Here we go. We ready. I was like, D, where have you been, sis? Really? Was that your first time out of the country? Mm -mm. Driving oh. it all over, all over, all the time. But this was not ministry. Oh, was, got you. This was the live. Yes. Yeah. And so after that, I think I am. I am on a mission to be fully myself all the time. Mm. I should not have to wait for a vacation to feel That's like right. I'm fully myself. Yes. So my quest is to feel like I am fully myself all of the time. But my, I mean, really, at Starbucks, I'm fully myself. I know that sounds crazy, but really, I'm fully myself. 
Okay. Is it because um, you're not in front of a crowd or you, you're yeah. not presenting something? You're more in your zone. Your zone, right? You're tuned in. You don't have people coming up to you. You know, right. is it something like that. That's what I feel. Um, I used to work at Starbucks. For years. Okay. And I remember in training, they called it the third place, like basically another house, other home. And I'm 17 years old, moving to Winston and working at Starbucks. My parents ain't here, you know, and it became another home. When when I was frustrated, let me go to Starbucks, give me a drink and sit down and think about my life. Mm -hmm. And now at 37 years old, I still do it. Wow. I still do it. I, I go to Starbucks every day. Like I, Oh, you like me, girl. I got every tumbler. <laughs> I got a every day. bad spirit on me purchasing them towels. Every day. And I sit there looking crazy about it. And I process my entire life at Starbucks. Wow. Almost the words that God have, has given me has been at Starbucks. Wow. I sit and I'm just like, well, nobody else. I want nobody with me, please. I mean, you can wave at me, but don't sit with me. Because I'm, I'm processing like, don't go on now. I'm trying to, you know. Right. This is my time. This is my time. This is, my time. This is me right here. <laughs> and I just. I feel like, duh, even to the point, all the employees bring me my stuff. Like they know I'm there processing. I, I, right. really, I don't know. Everybody has their place, and yeah. my house is a place of comfort. I love it. But Starbucks, I I get in my car and go to Starbucks to think. When I'm having crisis, I get in my car. I get a drink. I go to Starbucks and I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. I do. Some people space is their car. Mine is when I get a seat at Starbucks, and it has to be my seat because I have a particular seat. I cannot. Yes. No, do you get upset if somebody sitting in your seat? If somebody no, sitting don't be in my seat. I be praying, Lord, they gotta get out. Hello. We're <laughs> the pandemic with nobody in there anyway. I'm sure they know you by name. I'm name, sure. Drink mood. If I come in with like no makeup on and sweats, they'd be like, "So you you want an iced espresso with vanilla?" Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's my little <clears throat> place. It is, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like so that. that. That's that's my. I really on my on my. I'm on a quest to be fully myself. I hate feeling restricted. I hate walking on eggshells. Right. You know what? I'm on a quest to be. Um, speaking of restrictions and not feeling fully yourself, <clears throat> I actually just had like a career change. Okay. Um, because I just can't be tied down to a desk all day. I can't be tied down to an office setting all day. I have too much personality. I have too much. You do. You have a lot of personality. <laughs> I'm just a little too much to be behind the closed door. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, I can't do it. So y'all pray for me. I'm, I'm serious. Please pray for me as I'm trying to figure this thing out. Amen. Seriously. Y'all out there, if you hear me, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go this live cry to all my little business. I, tell, I really tell my business on my podcast because I just, like, I get to talk and be like, well, honey, let me y'all. Oh, I'm following you on your podcast, baby. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I be telling it. it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. If you need a guest speaker, please invite me because I'm going to be on there telling it too. Right. Look, I need to do it. I'm going to tell everything. <laughs> you know, I don't hold back. I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, and there's a place I know what to, what to hold and what not to hold, but the stuff uh, I've really seen breakthrough come from me just being like, okay, so let me just be open with you. Let me tell you what's what's going on. People be like, oh my God, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yes. Well, Dr. Evans, we we wholeheartedly thank you yes, for sharing you. your time with us today. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and hopefully if things work out in the future, we can get you back on again. Talk okay. about anything you want to talk about. If right. you want to promote your coaching that's coming up, this is a space for you, and yes. that's coming from me. Thank you. And James, it's coming from us. Um, I wish you nothing but the best. Yes, Much success to you. Much love to you, too. Yes, and this was great. Bless you. Now, can you tell the people where they can find you, where they can follow you, where they can follow purchase you, yeah. your things? 
Okay. Follow me, people. Follow me at um, Hey Dr. D on all social media handles or social media channels. And then um, if you go to www.thedevans.com, all my other stuff is there. Whether it's business or coaching, it's links to everything. So hit your girl up. And um, yes, I look forward to talking to you all. Oh yeah. Now, do you also do you have an event coming up where they can come, if they can come to it or anything in the works coming up? Who they just missed it yesterday. I had a webinar, but it's okay. It's, it's another one. Oh. <laughs> it's another one coming. So this okay. is I send out updates. Join the email list. I'll get you on it. No big deal. Okay. <laughs> Join her email list. Join and email list. Please, so you can keep up with her, keep in contact with her, find please. out where she's going next. Right. And if you haven't already. Please purchase uh, Miss Tanika books. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna buy mine. You got it? Okay. I'm gonna buy oh, mine. yeah. So we got Some more books. Come on, books. Come yeah. through. The Climax. That's number two. Come on. And that's number one. They are on Amazon. You can get a copy from me. It come with bookmarks, free shipping. Ooh, I got you covered. Marks. You know, they don't make bookmarks like they used to. I, I have two sided them. bookmarks now. So it mm -hmm. literally has the design on both sides. Wow. Oh, for both of my books. And I got them laminated at FedEx. Mm. Yep. Yeah. I like that. But they really don't. I be having to go to my kids' school fair to get really? their little bookmarks. Yes, they don't make bookmarks like that. Uh, yeah. I have everything is there, everything though. is um electronic. Wow. Yeah. And audio. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm old is. school. <laughs> Look, I'm old school. I you be having to highlight and underline. I like highlight. Come on, highlight. Come on, underline. Yeah, come on, highlight. <laughs> I'm not gonna highlight it so well. All right, home. ladies and everyone out there in Facebook land, we surely thank you for joining us on this session um, of Let's Be Real and oh, Just yeah. Be You. Yeah. Thank you yeah. and good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>